Hey guys, what's going on? Aaron Bennett here. In this video, I'm going to dive into what I'm looking at right now. So there's a lot going on in the market, as there freaking always is. And I'm just going to dive into the charts I'm looking at from a couple people I follow on Twitter that are uh, giving me some information about what I am looking at right now in terms of um, where the potential top of this bull market is and are we close to that point? Um, because that is something that a lot of you guys are wanting to know, including me. Uh, some of you guys are probably going to sell a little bit at the top or, or try to time it or maybe like take a little bit of profits. But some of you guys are just going to hodl and stake and just not worry about it. And I'm probably going to be more in that category. Also, a couple stories talking about uh, why this guy Scaramucci thinks that a ton of institutions are going to come into crypto over the next year to year and a half. Then taking a look at Raul Paul again saying there's a 70% chance that Bitcoin and Ethereum hit these pretty high valuations. So let me first just dive in to the first story here. So we have plan B saying that when Bitcoin is in all time high mode, when the color of this little dot turns red, that's when Bitcoin is in all time high, it usually stays in all time high mode for a couple of months. You can see that all the way back, even at 2013 here, when it hit red, it stayed red for a while. Then looking at 2017, when it hit its all time high, it stayed in all time high zone for a very, very long time, right? When it hit its all time high at around, I guess around a thousand or $1,500 or so, it stayed essentially going up all time high with little dips, but I, I think looking at monthly charts, it's going up, you know, for a couple months. And we saw uh, the beginning of 2021 and end of 2020, it stayed all time high, it stayed red. We kept, we kept hitting new all time highs for a while. So right now we are hitting the first essentially month of all time highs. So history, you know, the whole thing, history usually rhymes. History is probably gonna rhyme. It would be pretty weird to hit an all time high and then like not hit more all time highs. So that's the first chart I wanted to show you guys. Taking a look at the next chart. So Bitcoin is above 60K. Of course, that's not the first time. There is a big difference though. In March and April, so when we hit 60K the first time, most people were selling the top. This time, most people are accumulating the top. So same price, but the actions of investors are significantly different. So you can see here, this is where we hit 60K the first time and the little dots are in blue. And blue means that mostly small fish are accumulating. Cool. So now, same price, whales or many groups of all sizes are accumulating. And here they say, last time Bitcoin was above $60,000, people were selling. This time, they are accumulating. So that is very good news as well. The next story, take a look at Bitcoin balance on exchanges is its lowest since August 2018. Increased demand, fixed supply. What happens next? So let me go through the story. So this is the balance on exchanges versus the price of Bitcoin. So the gray line is going to be the price of Bitcoin and the orange line is the balance on exchanges. So usually when the balance on exchanges, like right here, is low, when there's not enough supply, but there's a lot of demand, like we're going to see in this story saying that there's going to be a lot more demand coming from institutions. What's that going to do? So this chart isn't 100% clear in terms of the correlation, because back in uh, September 2018 or so, we saw that the balance on exchanges was actually very low. And then soon we actually saw, uh, you know, the price come down. So this isn't going to be like a slam dunk chart. But in general, you know, Lack of supply, increased demand makes price go up. So the next chart I want to look at, Bitcoin risk level. This is from October 24th. So today, as I'm recording this, the aggregate risk measures whether or not the market is overheated. Blue is low risk. Red is high risk. Right now, the risk is at 47%. And this chart says this is not what a top looks like. So let me break this down for you. You can see the first halving on the bottom. Anytime that we hit red for a sustained amount of time, we did see a dip in price. Uh, you can see the second halving in the middle here. When we hit red, we came down. Definitely at the peak of the 2017 bull run, it was red for a while. We did come down. And even in this little top, mid, 20, or mid 2019, it was red for a little while. 
and then we saw the market cool off a bit. So here in the third halving where we are now, you can see that April, May, when we hit the 60,000 the first time, we were red for a while. And then the market cooled off, obviously, as we know. And now we are at the same price of Bitcoin, but the market is not red. It's not overheated at all. It's this kind of yellow color, which you can see here is right in the middle, what they say, 46%, I believe. So when this gets red, you know, it'd be a good time to think about taking profits if that's what you want to do. So obviously, guys, if you are not following the station already, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't have to follow all these accounts on your own. When I get updates about these types of things, I'm tracking a whole bunch of metrics, a whole bunch of um, people who do this for a living, who are basically telling you what's going on on chain and all that kind of stuff. If you just want to let me tell you what's going on, just go ahead and subscribe so you don't have to do this on your own. But anyway, these three charts are looking good right now. So we are at the same price we were at before. And, you know, we are not overheated. And the supply on exchanges, all time low, which is very good. Uh, the last time we hit $60,000, the all time high, the supply on exchanges was much, much higher. So it made selling much easier. Usually big whales and big accounts keep, or even retail, they keep their coins, they keep their Bitcoin on exchanges because they're thinking about selling. They're thinking about uh, getting rid of that Bitcoin. When it's not on exchanges, there's a less likelihood of them selling their Bitcoin, just to clarify that. And then in this chart, again, just to recap, uh, you can see that we are at the same price, but now the whales are accumulating or, and everyone's, you know, accumulating. And last time they were selling. Let's take a look at the first story. Avalanche of institutions to descend on crypto markets over the next 12 to 18 months. So we are seeing Scaramucci talk about what he thinks about the market. So he starts off saying that Bitcoin may retrace to 50K, which, you know, may happen. But he says that Bitcoin is going to break 100,000 after there's more ETFs. He says it's likely to get to 150K over the next 12 months. He says, I think it's going to be $100,000 by the end of the year. So one of the reasons why he says this is that now it's just become a lot more easy for institutions to buy Bitcoin. He says, I'm not going to get fired if I own this thing. Basically, if somebody who was investing on behalf of an institution was wanting to buy Bitcoin, now they can do so without losing their job. So the SEC allowing these futures ETFs and hopefully soon a spot ETF, um, it's just bringing a lot more people to uh, the yard. You know what I mean? So next story and the final story, Raul Paul is saying there's a 70% chance Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to hit these marks. Bitcoin hitting 200K, Ethereum reaching 20K. And he's talked about this before. He says Bitcoin is replicating the price behavior it displayed in 2013. So there's a chart here that overlays the 2013 bull run to the current price. And my goodness, is it very similar. So I thought we would be higher right now, October 24th, 2021. I think a lot of people thought we'd already be at around 100K, but whatever. A lot of people said that if China didn't do what they did and literally which caused that, or which was a big factor in the recent dip back in April, uh, we already would be at 100K, but who cares? So right now we are still very much tracing the 2013 rally. And I think there's around a 4X in price if we were to repeat that 2013 rally. So that is pretty cool. He also says that Ethereum could potentially even reach 40k by the end of the first or second quarter of 2022. If it follows the, the price behavior Bitcoin exhibited during the 2017 bull run. So he says Ethereum right now is looking like what Bitcoin did in 2017. And right now, uh, Bitcoin is looking like what Bitcoin did in 2013. So that's what he's basing this on. It's a uh, a little bit of a sketchy base is saying, oh, the charts look the same, so therefore it's going to repeat. I mean, just to give my criticism here, we really don't know. I much more look at these charts, you know, the, the ones I shared earlier. Uh, the plan B, when we hit an all-time high, it usually does more all-time highs. Right now, people are accumulating versus selling at the same price. Looking at the supply on the exchanges is at an all-time low. And then taking a look at how heated the markets are, we are at a very low risk level in terms of, you know, getting into a territory where we may correct. I'm much more looking into that versus just some dude saying the charts look the same. <laughs> but I do share his stuff because he's very influential 
Uh, you can't underestimate the fact that he has almost 700,000 uh, followers on Twitter, and what he says can have an impact. So I do share that for those reasons, guys. Alrighty, that is it for the video. Short and sweet. Let me know your thoughts below in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. That would be really awesome. Until next time, talk with you soon, and bye for now.